Hello everybody. Uh, this video is to support those people who are going to build their own units and I have documented it in the uh, website but I thought it might be helpful to actually show um, a little video also and hopefully it will reinforce what the documentation on the website says. Alright so I've uh, modified this uh, board I took it out of the uh, plasma ball. I separated it. First separated this from the plasma ball. This is the platform that this was mounted on. So I unscrewed that, pulled it out, and I removed two resistors, R6 and R8, and I replaced the resistors uh, with a switch actually I added a switch in line with the resistors let me rephrase that I didn't I took them out I took them out right here um, trying to hopefully you can see this maybe if you blow this up you can see it um, you'll see two resistors let me see if I got something better to point with uh, right there and right there uh, I know that's not very good either um, uh, we'll use we'll use another board here one that I'm checking out. Okay, so right there, right where that white wire is pointing, and right there are the two resistors that I removed. Um, try to do this a little bit better again. Right there and right, th right there. That's R6 and R8. Okay, enough on that. And I added a switch. I added a switch in series with the resistors. I removed them from the bottom and I put them in line with the switch and I soldered them on the bottom when I replaced them rather than putting them back on top because I want all my leads coming off the board from the bottom. So for me, um, for me I have a um, a on off on switch you don't need to use an on off on switch you can just use a toggle switch that is on on it switches the direction that it's, it's connecting um, I had a lot of these so that's why I'm using them there's another reason but I'm not going to get into it right now um, the other lead here goes to the spooky so when the switch is in one position happens to be uh, the position it's in right now, it would be connected to the spooky, goes through the inline resistor, and it's back in the circuit just as if it was in the board. And this one, um, the switch is the switch here. I happen to use color coded wire is red and black, and that represents uh, resistor number six that I removed, and it replaces resistor number six. Um, Actually, it configures resistor number six in line with this switch. And I did the same thing for uh, the gating. And that happens to be resistor eight, if I look at it properly. I have resistor, re resistor eight. And both those resistors were 10K. So while I have the board here, something else I want to show you that's very important. Um, I have right here this black these black two wires that's a mechanical thermistor uh, set for 85 degrees it's a uh, heat sink glued to the transistor heat sinks glued hope this works for you hope it's not too blurry and I had to cut a land and that land is right there um, you can see that this land, again, this land comes off the transis, uh, the transformer. And if you follow it, it goes right to a point where I drilled a hole and scraped some of the solder mask off. Cut the land on the other side of, of that hole that I just drilled. And that separated it from uh, the collector of the, the power driving transistor. But fortunately, on this particular board, the LAN on the power driving transistor, the, the uh, collector, just went right through and it went to nowhere. It was just hanged off with a uh, place where I could reconnect. So 
that's what I did. So when the switch is closed, it basically bypasses that cut and makes it look like it's just a normal connection. When the switch opens, it means the transistor got too hot and it um, breaks the circuit and lets the transistor cool down. Very, very, very simplistic. Okay, so that's about all I can show you physically. Um, took five minutes to do all that. I'm talking too much. All right, so now I'm going to show you a quick test. And you really need to have a scope. You really need to have a scope. This white wire um, is ground, is the board ground. So I'm going to connect my scope ground to that. And I left a little insulation. I left a little insulation exposed on the thermistor so I could connect a probe to it because I know that that's connected to the collector of the driving transistor. If I put both my switches in the position as if the board was normal, not modified or anything, and I connect up my power, And I turn on the switch. In the background, you can see the, the pulses going, going to the transformer. And that's the normal, um, right out of the box, spooky, uh, not spooky, right out of the box plasma ball. If I was to sco start scoping points on the board, I would see that. If I want to check and see if my spooky connections are going to work, I turn off the power and I connect to that little red wire that was hanging off the switch you might have saw and I connect I just connected that to my channel one of my spooky I connect channel two of my spooky to the gating and I connect my ground make sure they're not touching they're not to the ground lead on the board very carefully I do all this and I turn on and make sure I check everything make sure nothing's shorted and I turn on the board and look at that that's that's what it's supposed to be doing oh channel 2 right now there is a high voltage potential coming off that wire it's ionizing the air I can smell it but if I move my second channel probe to it you can see you can see the channel two getting higher and higher. It'll go right off. The, it goes right off the scale. That's the high voltage potential that gets inside the uh, plasma ball. Goes up into the center. All right. Now, if I I have the spooky already running, um, I've got to suffer 35 kilohertz at amplitude of six volts, a duty cycle of 30 percent, and an offset of plus for my frequency. So if I switch the switch to the Spooky, oh, look at that. The Spooky now is driving the plasma. Of course, it's not in so, so I'm showing you as using probe two just as a sensor, a voltage sensor. Okay. Um, if I switch, I have channel two switch for one hertz. This scope is a bad scope to demonstrate it because it's averaging four pulses, but I can see it, and you might not be able to see it. Oops, lead came off. It's flickering. It's flickering at the rate of one hertz. Um, you can't see that probably on the... Uh, well, maybe you can any rate, I know that the gating's working. If I had this plasma ball on top of this, it would be going on and off uh, one cycle per second. And I happen to have that set at one hertz, amplitude of 10 volts, plus 100% uh, um, positive offset, and I have a duty cycle of 50%. All that was defined very clearly in the uh, write-up. So that's how I check out the board before I put it back in the case. One last thing, I'm going to turn the power off so I don't actually move wires into some place and they short things. One last thing I want to show you. So when I built my, uh, uh, when I cut out the holes for my, my plasma ball uh, for the switches and so forth, 
I mount the two connectors inside um, and they're ready. Let me just disconnect this so I can hold the board in my hand again. Take the power off. Those connect that that's what the spare wire is on the switch. It's not really a spare wire. It goes the red goes to uh, what I would call the, the main frequency channel and the yellow goes for what I would call the gating channel. So I hope that gives you a little insight on how to uh, build this a little bit better than just the, uh, the write up in the pictorial. Um, putting this board back on, it's mount, it's free, is um, a little tricky. But it's certainly very doable because I've done it now uh, uh, at least 10 times. At least 10 times. I've made that many plasma balls already. Um, but you have to, and you'll notice where the wires come. The wires come in between. The wires come, oh, let me take this off first before I actually clip it on. The wires come in between here, right where I'm wiggling my finger. Um, that's why I had glued them so they would st all stay bunched together there. Yeah, that's actually glued. I didn't mention that, but I think I did in the uh, in the write-up. And you really just have to be a little bit mechanical to see how this snaps back in. Uh, but it is, uh, it is a little pesky. It doesn't snap in as easily as I would like it, but it does snap in. And I have to actually say that they did a very good job on the design of the uh, the clips here because I've had this in and out a half a dozen times. And there we go. It's in there now. And I haven't broke them. Uh, they really are just, it's really a pretty good design there. Okay, so now this is ready to get mounted in. I will solder. I will screw these two switches into the holes that I've already drilled. I will do a little bit of soldering and then tuck it all together and I will have a completed plasma ball. It takes at least, I thought I could do it an hour. It takes me two hours to do everything. And that's if I do like a mass production where I get five plasma balls and I drill all the holes at once and I um, I solder everything at once. Uh, you know, I have, I do, I, and this I actually have to um, let dry uh, I just can't turn around and um, uh, just glue it on. It won't stay. And I use a binder holder to hold it until it's dry, dry, dried. Um, if I can get that on there, give you a good example. And that's how I let that dry, and it uh, works fine. Once it's dry, you can take the binder holder off. It's actually pretty hard to get off. Um, if you had to replace a transistor or something, which I've already done. I bought a bunch of these uh, TIP-122 Darlington uh, uh, transistors uh, because I suspect that I would be popping one or two uh, in all my development work and so forth. Believe it or not, I have not popped one of these yet. Um, I'm just totally amazed. <laughs> all right, that's the end of this video. I hope it helps you uh, in the construction.